is the Cybertruck coming to Europe and uh, do they even want it? It's so big, it's so clunky and hard to drive, or is it? That's what we're going to find out. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. I've got best in Lars Tesla with me. That's his real name. That is his uh, given name. Yeah. They uh, have some very, his parents were hippies, what can I say? <laughs> uh, so let's uh, walk out here and have a chat. Yeah. So my question would be, you, have you driven the Cybertruck? I have finally got to drive the Cybertruck at the event in Michigan, the summer meetup. So that was really nice. And what did you think of it? It's too big, right? It's too it, hard to drive, too clunky? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's noisy out here. Yeah. Um, you want to go back in there? We will go back in, but you can just explain real quick. I'm just showing that there yeah. is a Cybertruck, in fact, here. Yeah, right yeah. here, yeah. yeah. No, it felt like very compact when you're driving it, oh, also hey. because of the steer-by-wire. Hey. It felt very compact. Yeah, it felt very compact with the steer-by-wire. So the turn radius mm. is so small. I was so surprised at how aggressive it wanted to turn when you turned the wheel. Um, so it, it felt like my Model Y, basically. Would you feel comfortable in a narrow street? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it turns like a small car. Yeah. Now, trucks are famously sloshy and boaty. How did it feel in, in terms of that? It felt very, very good. It's not like Plaid <laughs> Model S, but it's still very comfortable to drive. It doesn't if, feel if, like a truck. If someone had blindfolded you and put you in it so you didn't know you were in a truck, yeah. would you think from driving it that you're in a car or a truck? Car. Absolutely a car. Yeah. So now the question is, is it coming to Europe? We've seen some things about different regulations that could be a complication. Yeah. Their edges might be too... Uh, too sharp. Too sharp. Yeah. Too pointy. <laughs> um, do you think there would be concerns about the weight? or the crash safety. I mean, the, the rounded edge is that something that would either have to be changed by the regulators or the manufacturer. Yeah. But do you think that they could, in terms of crash worthiness, do you think it would, it would pass? Yeah, I think it would pass the crash test for sure. But the weight is probably the one that most are concerned about because it, it weighs so much that you would have to have a truck license in most of the European countries. A different kind of license. Yeah, you can't just use your... I, I wouldn't be able to drive it. I would have to get a new kind of license for it in, in my country. But we have seen in UK they have changed the regulations because it's electric. They have trucks and vans. They can now, instead of weighing 3,500 kilos, they're allowed to weigh 4,500 kilos with your old drive license. So they are changing the laws, and I think that will happen in more and more countries. Just like we saw with the semi-truck, it's allowed to weigh 2,000 kilos more because it's electric. And in, in Europe, they also have a weight allowance extra yeah. for, the, for the cargo semis. Yeah. So that's... Uh, and they have already changed the law of the size of the semi-trucks as well, even oh. though we don't have the Tesla semi-truck yet, and I heard they had the same thing done in Australia. So yes. they are starting to change the laws because they want to push for EVs, and there are some barriers that we need to change to make it more. Yeah. As I understand, the rule in Australia was that they had um, made it so that the, the width had to be a, a very specific maximum width, and it was, oh, and U.S. built semi-trucks were over by like two inches. Mm -hmm. And that may have been a protectionist measure uh, to keep uh, manufacturing in Australia, but it's gone. Yeah. So now the question is, do you want to allow semis built in the US or just China? And I guess yeah. some Europe, but let's just, it's two inches, guys. We can handle it. Yeah. Our roads are sufficiently modern. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I say our there. Uh, so do you think there would be a demand for this vehicle? Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a big demand and I know people that have already put in an order for it. Jan from Tesla Fix, I know he got an order. Uh, so I think there's a big demand and I think when, when people see it and test it out, that's really where even some of the people that didn't want it, I was one of the persons that thought it was too bulky, too, too 
yeah, bulky for my taste. But when I test drove it and felt it, it was like, oh man, I want this car now. It's too big, it's too weird, it's too angular, uh, it's too ugly. Yeah. And they're never gonna build it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's too wide for the European roads. But we have semi trucks, we have lorries, sprinter vans, yeah, sprinter we have, vans. yeah, yep. so we have cars that are this big and works fine in, in, uh, in Europe. But yes, it is a big car to put in your parking lot. So was there the Hummer that came a little bit smaller to the European market, but still big car. Worth noting that tour buses are about a meter wider yeah. than a Cybertruck. <laughs> and you've seen those going through those little tiny villages full of tourists. Yeah. So uh, now I, I wouldn't say I want something that's a hundred inches wide to drive around, but if a professional can do that, a person can do it with something that's significantly narrower, and it's really not that much wider than a Model X. Yeah. It's like percentages, single digit percentages wider, I'm pretty sure. We might need to put up the width of the Model X and the Cybertruck on screen now, <laughs> just to compare. And we do have pickup trucks, we do have the F-150 normal okay. pickup truck in Europe or Ram or all these guys and they are basically the same size as the as a semi truck, for, uh, cyber a, truck as a yeah. cyber truck for sure yeah yeah and if you look I mean yeah the F-150 is pretty big uh, Lars did get to see some unusual things on our roads uh, the first being way too many pickups and, and SUVs yeah <laughs> that was pretty unusual uh, and then he got to see um, what was the other one you said you saw that was oh that a, a jacked up pickup. Yeah, jacked up pickup. You don't see that much in Europe. We don't see many pickups in Europe, but uh, yeah, definitely not the jack one. <laughs> it was, and you know what? By our standards, it wasn't that extreme. It was just lifted with different tires, but not even that far. <laughs> but still, it's a spectacle. Yeah. I've definitely never, I've only seen a handful of, uh, of them in the, in the US, yeah. uh, in, in Europe. Yeah, so, uh, Cybertruck in Europe, worth, worth noting, noting, they, they have, have not yet canceled, canceled the, the, um, the, the reservations. reservations. No. Nope. Does that give you hope? Yeah. Uh, I even have seen people that uh, booked tickets to go to see the Cybertruck because it's on tour right now in Europe, showing off it in different cities, and they got emails back saying thank you for coming, so now you can see it before you get yours delivered in Europe. So it, I still think they are working hard on either <laughs> changing, getting the regulation changed in Europe or they're gonna change the, the van. But I really think they want this in Europe, uh, Tesla, and they're trying to do everything they can to I, get it over here. And I, and I really think that the regulation on edge and edge radius might be too extreme. That might be something that's ripe for replacement. Because look at some of the other vehicles that are out there, and you tell me this is safer than a Mercedes G, or less safe than a Mercedes G wagon. Yeah. And the front end is low. I mean, they would have to, of course, put, potentially put um, hood pops on it for pedestrian safety. Yeah. Or who knows, a hood airbag or something like that even. Yeah. There's a number of ways to, to get it done. Uh, which country do you think would buy the most of them in Europe? That's a good question. Well, Germany is the biggest it's car the biggest. market, so I, I will bet you they're gonna enjoy these big cars because they have already been the one that makes the biggest cars in Europe. Oh, sure. So, yeah. An S-Class Mercedes is yeah. a big it's car. Big cars. And you've got to look at how much wilderness they have, how much yeah. outdoorsy stuff they have, and it yeah. is quite a bit. Yeah. So I think uh, that's very exciting. So you heard it here first, Cybertruck is coming on October 3rd. <laughs> yeah. Lars, Lars just said so. Yeah. Uh, well, he just didn't say which year. Yeah. So it'll be available by October of a year. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So uh, what did we miss? What did we misunderstand? Thank you so much to Lars from Best in Tesla for being nice. Um, <laughs> and fun fact, if you do see Lars in person, um, he brings out a commemorative slap he will <laughs> deliver one in person yeah. uh, upon request or apparently that thing I said about his mother. <laughs> so it is, uh, what, we, it is what we do. Uh, so find him at the next event. You're going to be going to England 
for fully charged this year? No. Oh no. This year. Do you have any events coming up we should mention? No. Nope, not on the calendar at the moment. No. He gets out as much as he can, but this year I think we've worn him out appropriately. <laughs> With the last two big events, you had your chance. Yeah. Uh, but I will be at the X Takeover in San Luis Obispo at the end of July. Uh, catch me there. And I'll also be driving home uh, for over the next probably week. Who knows when this is coming out, but uh, who knows? Check me out. So uh, everybody else, like, subscribe, do the usual. Smash thumbs, uh, slap Lars, and uh, whatever you do, stay tuned, stay juicy, and I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots uh, in San Luis Obispo, California. <laughs>